the regime that I got drafted into, winning this decade in NFL history, I mean, I was too young to fully get a chance to really enjoy the only thing. I only had a few years in that culture. And then when we moved to the next culture, it was just a very different operation. It was like, let's spend money on free agents. Let's get people in here. And it was just, when the locker room wasn't completely together, it was a whole different world. The the team that you built there in Indianapolis that I got to see a tail end of with, the, with all the guys that you're mentioning and also the people that you brought in just like for special teams it was just you walked in that building you had this feeling like okay this team is a team that wins this is a team that that works hard and I want to ask you about the year whenever we did not win a lot it was your last year as general manager for the Colts there's always been a lot of conversation like did they suck for luck did they try to lose and I always answer, well, the players didn't try to lose, and Bill Polian got fired after that, and all the coaches got let go. So that conversation is an interesting one. Did you know going into that year that it was potentially going to be your last year being general manager? And what were the decisions that you had to make whenever you find out that one of the greatest players in the history of the game is going to be out for the season there? Well, <laughs> how much time do we have? Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. This is a real – because I've had this question now for like – seven eight years now because your position is one that is not easy in this whole thing because i mean you got to balance the greatest of all time with outside expectation that there's the next john elway coming in i mean there's a lot that you had to juggle in that entire world well let's go back to uh august of 11 when the lockout ended um we then only then found out that peyton had had serious surgery and it really hadn't taken as well as it should have uh but we still had hopes that he was going to be fine. Uh, he and I sat down and met, and we talked about when both of us might leave, which looked to be, in general terms, about four years hence. And and, and we, we basically agreed that we'd like to go out together if that was all possible. And I, I let Peyton know that it was my strong desire and Jim Irsay's strong desire that he finish as a cult. And, he, and I think he wanted that pretty badly. Oh, yeah. He, I, I said to him, you know, you're Derek Cheater, and you should be. You should go out as a, come in as a cult, the, the greatest of all time. Uh, Lucas Oil Stadium's here because of you, and you should go out as a cult. Yep. So that was the decision that, that we hoped to, to fulfill. Uh, then uh, on the day of the cut to 53, which was the Saturday following the last preseason game, I was actually in a meeting with the coaches discussing the, the structure of the squad. And... Uh, and one of the doctors came and got me and said, you have to come down to the training room. And uh, I knew it was serious because they wouldn't interrupt such a meeting. I went down there and Dr. Foyer, uh, who you know was, uh, was our uh, uh, spine doctor, uh, showed me the MRI and he said, Peyton's going to need to have a fusion here and he's going to be out for the season. So, uh, boom, <laughs> you know, knockout punch. So... When I, when I finally cleared my head, uh, I said, okay, I, I've, I've got to go back and, and at least tell Coach Caldwell, and, and then we'll finish cutting the squad, and then we need to get Peyton in here and talk to him about it. So I went back, and I took Jim aside and said to him, there's going to be a long-term problem with Peyton. Um, I've got to talk to Peyton about it you finish cutting the squad and then I'll come back and, and we'll deal with it. And in the interim, just before I went back to meet with Peyton, um, I called Jim Mercy to tell him that this was going to be the, yeah. the subject. Now, um, postscript here. During the original meeting with Peyton, when we talked about what the future would hold and he was going to sign a new contract, which he did. Uh, and, and the new contract, by the way, anticipated that there might be a situation where injury would prevent him from fulfilling a contract. So we, we addressed that in the contract. And he was very upfront about telling his agent, I want this done. This is this is the fair way to do it. Um, I told him, I said, look, it's my obligation to the franchise to make sure that your successor is on board. So I'm going to go and try and find that person. It doesn't mean he's going to succeed you before his time comes. And it certainly won't be this year, and it may not be for another couple of years. But I do have to look, and I'm and I'm and it doesn't do any either of us any good to to deny it publicly. Jordan so, Love, Aaron yeah. Rodgers, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so that we had taken that decision as well. So uh, when I finally got back with Coach Caldwell, 
Um, he said, we, need, we probably need to tell the coaches. So I got the coaches together and said, look, it, it, he's, Peyton's got a serious injury. It's going to require surgery. The likelihood is he's out for the year. And uh, so we decided to, to, to go forward as is. And then later that night, um, Coach Caldwell and I discussed about whether or not we should bring in a veteran quarterback. And, and we did. It was Kerry Collins, as you recall. And we tried to get him ready to play as quickly as we could. But that was going to take some time. Um, the assistant coaches were in absolute shock. Jim Caldwell was phenomenal. He, he, he said, and he, obviously he was the closest coach to Peyton because he had coached him for seven years yeah. um, as the position coach. And, and he, he and Tom Moore said, okay, hey, we, we just go forward. But they, there were a lot of other coaches that were absolutely in shock. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. It was a, a momentous, earth-shattering deal. Um, and, and so um, at that point, we just had to go forward. And our approach, our by, I mean, everybody in the football operation and every coach and every, of course, you were in all the meetings. You know what Jim said to the team. Oh yeah. Well, we're going to try and win every game, just like we did in years past. We don't have Peyton. We'll find another way to win. Uh, it took us a long while, half the season, to figure out. And of course, Kerry got hurt, killed. He got yeah. killed. I mean, it wasn't just he got hurt. I mean, he got absolutely slaughtered. Concussion. Yeah, concussion, and and that ended his career. Uh, so, you know. We then had to readjust the whole offense again. But I've said this on numerous occasions, and I'll say it again as loudly and proudly as I can. We won two out of the last three games. So if we were sucking for luck, you and I and everybody else in that locker room and that football operation never got the message. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, the celebration after that first win by everybody, yourself included in that locker room, it felt like a playoff win, to be honest. We were like, thank God we're not the Lions. Okay, we got to win. But we were pumped. And that's why it was so interesting because everybody outside was like, oh, they're sucking for luck. But then I see you and everybody else celebrating after we win and almost blow it at the end. I was like, I don't know if that is the case in this entire thing. Not at all. Not at all. It, it, it became an issue where, you know, I, I've said I've never been prouder of a team or a coaching staff than that group because, I mean, how do you sustain the loss of a guy like that, like Peyton? It, it's my fault that there wasn't a veteran backup quarterback there, and I take full responsibility for that and feel terrible about it because it cost so many people their jobs. Um, so I'm responsible for that and bear the burden of that. But the fact of the matter is we never quit. We never threw in the towel. We never said, oh, this is over. And we knocked the Houston Texans right the heck out of the play. <laughs> that felt good, didn't it? That felt good there, Bill. Now, Bill, I have this question for you. When that season ends, are you assuming, okay, I will draft Luck because I have the number one overall pick. He's so highly sought after. I'll keep him and Peyton. Peyton will be able to be like a mentor for Andrew, which I think, by the way, would have helped Andrew Luck's career immensely if he could have seen how Peyton would work off the field. Not just, I'm not talking about on the field. They both had incredible work ethics, but I'm talking about the way you talk to coaches, general managers, when you have a maybe a strength coach, an athletic trainer, the way he handled himself as being a CEO of that team as opposed to just being the quarterback. It's a different level i think if andrew could have seen it he would have been in a a whole different position especially now was that your plan though is like okay we'll bring in luck now he'll secede uh peyton peyton will hopefully be healthy back that next year and then you just get fired is that is that kind of how the whole thing played that's, out that's exactly the way saturday before the jacksonville game which was the last game of the season i met with jim ursay and he said which of the two quarterbacks do you think is the better one i said with all the you know, with all of the psychological work still to do. But, of course, I my son had been on the Stanford staff, so I knew a great deal about Andrew Luck. And I'd been to Stanford twice already that year, and I'd been to Baylor twice already to see RG3. Um, and and uh, I said, that, that, you know, Andrew is by far the better choice. But if we win the game against Jacksonville and, and, and we don't end up with the first pick, RG3, probably still a, a pretty good pick for us i think he you know he, he's very different than what peyton is and we'll have to change the offense but still i think he's a pretty good player but andrew was by far the choice uh if we have one so um that was the decision it was made 
And then uh, early Monday morning, we lost to Jacksonville. Early Monday morning, I called from a, a, a reporter friend who said, I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, you're going to be out. And uh, and then, you know, about 1030 or so Monday morning, Jim called me in and said, you know, it's done. So um, that's the way it went down. And uh, as I say, we, we never had any intention of doing anything but our best throughout the whole season, supporting you guys and helping you do your best. And and uh, as I said, I've never been prouder of a team than the effort and a coaching staff and the effort that you guys put in all season. And then winning those last two games was really pretty special. Watching watching that whole thing unfold nobody had a clue what was going to happen i i good friends obviously with dallas and and a lot of people uh, joseph adai you name it gary brackett the whole group there i was very lucky to kind of they kind of took me in and very welcoming to me even though i was much different than them as a human it was like the family atmosphere there i started getting texts from people that were like hey man they just cut me they're cutting Peyton. Don't answer your phone. Don't even answer your phone. It felt like there was an entire <laughs> clean sweep coming through there. So I turned my phone off for about a week and just saw if I survived on the other side of it. I was very thankful to still have a job, but that was a wild time in the history of football. I mean, just an insane time. Peyton gets cut inevitably, still had good football left for another three years after that, which your four-year deal was agreed to. I mean, it, it, so much could have changed there with the way that whole thing was handled. It's just, I'm happy to hear you talk about that, though. I, I don't think I've ever heard your side of the entire thing i was always intrigued on how you actually felt though uh throughout the entire process and how it ended to be honest because you had a like a 95 year in the nfl a 95 year career in the nfl and then that's how it kind of all ended